So in the previous episode, we learned how DC boost circuits work. And now with that knowledge in mind, we can take a look at this logic board and find out why its backlight is not powering up, starting with the input fuse. So here's our board, re board view. Uh, so let's search for F9800. Zoom out. All right, that's on the, yep, we're on the correct side of the board. Okay, so there's our LCD connector. So it's about top of the LCD connector, and then we've got a nice little line of, uh, of components going up there and a row of smaller components. So that should be nice and easy to find. Let's take a look. Okay, so here's our LCD connector. Um, there is our sort of diagonal line of components, and there is the row of smaller dudes. So there's our fuse there, that's F9800. So I've got my, uh, my um, multimeter in continuity mode, in beep mode. So it beeps when there is continuity. So let's check that guy. Okay, so that fuse is dead. There's no continuity across that. So the fuse is blown. So we've got no power getting into the circuit for a start. So why has the fuse blown? Do we have a short circuit? So let's do some more probing around. Firstly, I'm just gonna disconnect the LCD and we're going to check if there's an actual short circuit on the backlight line. So I need to find out uh, which pin on the LCD connector is the backlight power pins. So let's quickly switch back to the schematics and track that down. So if we click on this, we can just look down here and if we scroll down, doo -doo 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 -doo, there we go. Um, PPV out SW LCD backlight. So these two pins, 21 and 22, with two unconnected pins on either side for buffer zone, these are our LCD power pins. So uh, we wanna check the continuity here and check if there is a short to ground. Because if these guys are shorted to ground, then it's gonna keep blowing up fuses and probably other stuff along the way. So um, let's put one pin on ground. We're still in beat mode and let's check pins 21 and 22, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, and 21. And there's no short circuit there. And if we go up by another two, we should find ground. So 21, 20, 19, and 19 is ground. So there's no short circuit on the output. So let's move along to our LCD backlight enable circuit and just make sure there's no short circuits in that area. So where is the backlight enable circuit? Uh, let's switch back to the schematics. So um, our LCD backlight enable transistor, uh, that is Q9806, so let's find that. So. Search for Q9806. Right, that's on the other side of the board. Over we go. Right, and so as you can see, we've got a coil up here and then the transistor directly below it. There's our coil, there's our transistor. So we would wanna check for a short to ground on pins one through six. In fact, to be honest, you wanna to check for a short to ground on anything. There should be no grounds. According to the schematic, this transistor does not have a path to ground. So there should be no grounds on any of those pins. So let's quickly double check that. So ground check, let's find a ground, there we go. No, 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 cool. So there's no shorts to ground anywhere. So there is no short to ground. So why did the backlight fuse blow then? Why did that backlight fuse blow? That, that does me a concern, that worries me. I'm thinking what we're gonna do is just replace that backlight fuse and just see what lights up. But I'm a bit worried because um, I've got signs that I've replaced this fuse before. Um, so I have a feeling that we're gonna replace that fuse and it's just gonna blow again. But, you know, we'll find out. Maybe it was plugged into a bad LCD. Because if the LCD was shorted to ground, then that's gonna blow up our backlight circuit. 
So, oh. let's get ready to solder. All right, so as usual, we're preheating. Hot air is at range, we're just warming up the board. We're a couple of days before Christmas in England right now, so it ain't warm in here. All right, that should do it. It's only a fuse, let's go. Whoop, and off he comes. Easy peasy. I don't know why I'm trying to put down this fuse carefully. It's a dead fuse, we don't care about it. All right, so now we're just going to do a little bit of tidying up. I'm going to put a little bit of flux on the area and retin the pads so it's ready for a new fuse. There we go. This guy is tiny, so we don't need to do a lot here. Right, now I need a new fuse. Right, here comes the hot air again. So I'm just warming the area back up just to reactivate the flux. And now we're just gonna put that over the spot now I'm going to turn my airflow right down because we don't want to blow this away and then we can just come in and just reheat that. It's not very straight, but who cares? All right, now, did that stay on? Yes, it did. Good. Right, so let's do another continuity check across that. So, multimeter back into beat mode. And we now have continuity across F9800. So, let's power this thing back on and let's check what the backlight is doing. All right, power on via short circuit. So there's our fan spin. Right, now we're gonna do some voltage testing. So we've gone over to DC voltage. And firstly, we're gonna check that we have 12 volts coming out of the fuse. So we're gonna go one pin on ground at the top and let's check F9800. 12.6, so that is a happy PP bus G3 hot with an active SMC. And exactly the same on the other side. So there's now 12 volts in our backlight power line. So uh, let's check the output again. So let's head over to here. And let's check now I don't want to I don't want to try and check those pins because I don't trust my steady hand to hit those pins directly. Let's just have a quick look to see if there's a place we can check output from here. So let's head back. So pin 21. Right, so pin 21 and 22, they go back to D9701, this guy here. This is going to be a fairly large uh, diode. Um, and in fact, I can see that on the board now. So let's quickly switch back. So D9701 is this diode here. And so we're gonna check how much power we've got coming out of that. 
because that's the Xena diode. Remember they're on the straight line. Let's just check that again. So if y'all reckon back on our controller circuit, we've got a straight line across the top. We have power coming in here now. Well, we should have anyway. And there's our Xena diode, D9701. So on this side of D9701, on pin two, we should see up to 50 volts for the backlight circuit. So let's check how much is actually there. And pin two is the bottom. All right, so we have 12 volts on output. So we now have voltage getting to the output of our backlight circuit, but we're still not boosting. So why aren't we boosting? So the lo most likely reason for us to not be boosting at the moment is the fact that there's no LCD connected because um, there are enough sensor and feedback pins for the logic board to know when there is no LCD connected. And if there's no LCD connected, then those backlight enable signals are gonna go low because the logic board is gonna turn around and go, there's no LCD, therefore there's no point in me turning on the backlight, so I won't. Uh, so we'll just end up with that idle 12 volts going through the backlight circuit instead of it actually boosting up to full backlight power. So let's plug in our LCD and we'll see if we get a backlight. It's unlikely that we're going to blow up the backlight fuse because we've already checked for shorts to ground and we haven't found any. If there was a short to ground, then we would have reason to believe that we might blow up the backlight fuse. But actually, you know what, just for good measure, I know that this screen is okay, but I'm gonna show you how we double check that it's not a fault with the screen. So we've got the LCD connected up again. Let's just go back in to that connector and we're just gonna check if there's any short to ground now that the LCD is connected. Because if a short to ground has appeared in the time in which we plugged in the LCD connector, then that short is going to be inside the LCD or inside the display assembly somewhere. Because it couldn't have come from anywhere else. So we're going back into continuity mode. So beep on contact, we want a ground. So ground test, beep beep. And let's check the backlight line again. So there's no beep there. So there's no short to ground. So now we can be absolutely certain there's no reason whatsoever for that backlight fuse to blow when we switch this thing on. Right, green light on the charger. Short ground. Beep. There we go. And our survey says... Our survey says we have a backlight. Skadoosh. All right, so this one turned out to be really easy. Most likely the reason why I didn't fix this last time um, is what probably happened is when I was trying to fix this board, I most likely had a short circuit inside the display assembly. And after I replaced the backlight fuse, I plugged it into the same LCD and just blew up the backlight fuse again, which is why I ended up with this donor board. Uh, so um, uh, what I do know is that somewhere in my shop, there is a display assembly that's shorted to ground. However, we now have a working backlight, which means I can now stick this, uh, uh, this logic board into the broken laptop I have and sell it to a customer. Yeah. So we got off easy on this one, really. Uh, we just had to replace the fuse and that was it. That's all that was required. And the reason why the fuse had blown was that there was a short in the screen of the laptop that this logic board came out of, which had shorted out the line and blown the fuse. But what if you've replaced your fuse and that has not solved your issue? What else can you be looking at? Well, I already showed you how to check for shorts on the backlight boost rail, um, but uh, what if you've got no shorts and you still have no power? Well, you're gonna start off back on the backlight enable circuit. So we've got power as far as the fuse, we've replaced the fuse. The next thing we're gonna do if we didn't have any power is we're gonna check the output from Q9806 over here. Let's just zoom in again. So if there's no power coming out of Q9806, if there's nothing on pins one, two, five, and six of this guy here, that means that there is a fault somewhere in the power enable circuit. 
And that fault is either going to be that one of these things is faulty or one of your enable signals is missing. So either LCD backlight enable or PLT reset L uh, are gone. One of these two is missing, which is causing this guy to not turn on. So you're going to need to investigate those signals. If you have got power coming out of here, that means these two guys are present and you can forget this page entirely, which brings us back up to the main boost circuit. So now, having looked, having got power enabled turned on, we've got power coming into here. And so you're going to get to the point that we were at just then, where we've got 12 volts on the boost rail. However, it's not going to boost if it's not being told to, a la in this instance, because initially we didn't have an LCD plugged in, um, the, uh, uh, there was no reason to start up the boost circuit because there was nothing to power up. Um, however, if you have got your LCD connected and everything and you're still not boosting, um, the reasons you're going to want to check for that are most likely either your LED driver, that's this guy here, is faulty or damaged, or this guy is missing one of the signals it needs to boost safely. Um, so the most common thing to go is the feedback line. So this guy here, pin 21, it goes across and up to this point here, which is missing on the schematic because whatever. Um, however, this feedback line commonly gets destroyed uh, on, these, on these systems uh, because it's, again, it's a high voltage line going back to the chip. Now, if the feedback line is gone, this chip cannot monitor what the boost voltage is and thus to be safe, it will not boost at all. So you're gonna to wanna to check that you have continuity to pin 21 on your LED driver back up to here. And if that is missing, your feedback line is destroyed and you need to fix that. So the way that you would fix that is um, you could run a wire to it, um, or perhaps in, you might find a common symptom is that you'll find that pin 21, the actual pad, that this chip is sitting on is destroyed and you have to run a physical wire and things like that. And that's the area that you're gonna to wanna to investigate. Um, so that's about it there. That's the two usual suspects really. Either you're gonna have a missing enable circuit, uh, one of the devices is going to be faulty uh, or your feedback is gonna be messed up. So that's where you would start um, or where we would start if it's not just as simple as a blown fuse. So in summary, in this episode, we've learned how to replace our broken backlight fuse. We've seen how it's replaced and the effect it's had on the entire circuit, and also where we would start had it not been as simple as just simply a blown fuse. So if you have any questions, do leave them in the comments below, and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you very much.